All right, I think I've unmuted myself there. Hey folks, how you doing this morning? Let me know that you can uh, hear and see me okay. And I wanna make sure that we have that all taken care of before I get into what it is that I wanna talk about today. If you're in the chat, uh, there's a couple of us in there. Just let me know that you can see and hear me. Hey, Hubert. And uh, if you're in there, just go ahead and let me know who you are. And I wanna get this thing underway. Um, again, just let me know if you can hear and see me fine and we'll take it from there. But today, as I promised, every Thursday, I'm going to be doing a live stream at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time um, just to get in contact and in touch with you folks and give you folks a way to touch base with me and ask maybe some more in-depth questions in regards to what it is that you're looking to learn about in this whole thing we call voiceover and i'm just double checking here once again <clears throat> excuse me uh <laughs> that's an edit right uh for a voiceover piece but good thursday morning every thursday i'm going to be coming to you uh doing a live stream 9 a.m central standard time and i want to know what you folks want to know i've got some things that i want to talk about on today um, how are you guys liking the new videos? Have you been watching the videos with the green screen? I'm still working all of that out, but I'm getting better as every day goes by. I seem to get better and better with the whole green screen thing that I've been doing in the videos. I'm giving my presentation a new look and feel, and hopefully it's engaging, uh, for you guys. And if you have any feedback on that, let me know, because I want to know what you guys like what you don't like and things of that nature so i can give you the best possible presentation for what it is that i'm doing here we do or i do this particular youtube channel so that i can touch base with and really get a hold to that brand new that up and coming voiceover artist that is looking to start build and grow their voiceover business it's what i think is an underserved audience I made a decision, um, I guess we're about five or six weeks in now, that I do a video Monday through Friday, one video Monday through Friday, to just pump out this content that I believe people are really looking to get. Hey, Jay Davidson, how you doing? Good morning, sir. Thanks, I appreciate that. Thanks for letting me know that you've been enjoying the videos. Definitely appreciate that. And guys, don't be shy, and ladies, don't be shy about asking me questions. Um, it still surprises me that people send me in questions and I make a video based on those questions and they're like in shock that I made a video with their question. Well, that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to answer your questions and make sure that you're getting the information that you need. So definitely don't be shy about asking me questions or sending me that email. I think scrolling down the bottom now. It's like email your questions to earlhallvo at gmail.com and the subject, just go ahead and put VO question and I see all of those. So please open up, let me know what it is that you want to know. The purpose for these live streams is to go ahead and give you maybe a further opportunity to engage with me with some of the questions that you might have. A lot of great things are coming up and I'm kind of holding my tongue here uh, to talk about some of those things that I've got coming. But one of the things I want to make everyone aware of, <clears throat> I do a free 15 minute um, consulting session with anyone that wants one. And you can find that on the website, steps to voiceover success.com. And you can sign up for a free consultation. If you want me to take a look at your website, if you want me to take a listen to your demo, if you want me to, um, you know, look at your marketing or whatever it is that you're doing, your DAW. Um, I've got a good video coming up tomorrow. It would have been made today, but I've got to do a live stream. And someone basically wants to know how to add uh, plugins to Audacity, which is a free software program. And it's one of those things that, um, I love doing those types of videos, by the way, those demonstration videos that kind of show you how to do certain things with your DW. love making those particular videos. So send me those questions in too. Um, <clears throat> today, what I want to talk about, and I hope, well, maybe I do hope I go a little bit deep because in some instances, I think people really need this in the voiceover industry. 
you will get uh should i use the word ridiculed or made fun of or talked down to because of what someone else thinks your experience level is you'll get talked down to you'll feel inferior sometimes and i'm speaking from personal experience if you've never felt that great i'm glad that you have not gone through those types of experiences we have to get to a point when i say we i'm talking about you as an individual really have to get to a point where you just don't care what people say or what people think and i'm talking about even myself every one of us has that little bit of judgment in or we'll let's say we'll hear someone's demo and we'll be like uh, maybe that's not too good you know or whatever when people send me demos i give them feedback based on my experience based on my ear um, and what i hear in the demo it goes way beyond presentation um in particular, I talk about when people ask me questions about their website, I'm very honest, I'm direct, I'm very direct and to the point when it comes to giving feedback. And usually people take that pretty well because, you know, I'm trying to give them the information that they're looking for. We don't need someone in our corner all the time saying, yeah, you're great, yeah, you're great. Sometimes we need someone that's just gonna say, hey, you might really wanna look at that. You know and if they have the experience and they give you the reasons why you want to they want you to look at that then it's something to take heed to i'm in the middle right now of developing my um brand new corporate logo for earlhallstudio.com and <clears throat> sometimes feedback you don't even want but sometimes feedback you really do but when you're talking about something like a logo like i'm redesigning right now um this is completely based on what i like you know, so if someone has an opinion on it, it's like, well, start your company and build your logo. But anyway, you've really got to get to a point where when, and how do, I, I want to phrase this correctly when it comes down to you not caring about what anyone else has to say. I say that in context with so many voiceover artists are looking for permission to do what they want to do. They're looking for permission from a coach or a, a colleague or something like that, that is saying, yeah, you're ready. I, I put up a, uh, a post on my Instagram um, and I post quite frequently on Instagram. So if you're not following me there, you might want to, it's just Earl Hall Studio, at Earl Hall Studio. Um, and that's on Instagram. And I basically said, you know, stop waiting for them to tell you you're ready. Who are you waiting on and why are you waiting? At some point, you've got to pull the trigger and just go for what it is that you want to go for. In this particular case where we're talking about being a voiceover artist, you're going to you're going to make a mistake from the beginning. You're going to you're going to do something that maybe might not be perfect or whatever, but you have to start. And I think that's the whole thing. People are scared to pull that trigger and go ahead and start. And this is, whether we're talking about your marketing, whether we're talking about your demo, and you're gonna hear me harping on your demos forever. I am so serious when I talk about making your own freaking demo, you just don't know. Um, at some point, it becomes a con to me when people are talking about you've got to have a professional demo made and I just call BS on it. It's like, yeah, you want a professional demo made if you're going for certain types of jobs, you know, like I've said, the movie trailers, the, the national ad campaigns and things like that. Those things where you're going into someone else's studio in order to do a job. That's the main reason that I'm understanding that you need to have a really professional $2,000 demo made. Go for it. But when you're a freelancer and you're a one man shop and in 2017 and moving forward, everybody more and more that's in the voiceover industry is going to be a one man shop. And those that win in this game are going to be the ones that understand how to use their DAWs, become somewhat of an audio engineer. And it's not that hard for voiceover. It's really not that hard. We're not making music soundtracks here. It's a voiceover. 
And when you understand and learn how to make those things to um, the level that your clients want that, well, let's, let me step back further. You make your own voiceover demo because you can produce that same sound. And you've heard me say this over and over again. If you're going to have a professional demo made and then you're just going to... Um, you know, put that out there and then someone hires you and you can't produce that same audio quality that someone else produced for you in that $2,000 demo, you're, you're just out of here. Hey, Anthony, how you doing? This isn't the end. We're just starting. <laughs> we just started 12 minutes ago. So yeah, welcome in, um, Anthony. Um, great having you here. Um, so I'm going to be harping on that over and over again. Do what you can to learn how to utilize your DAW and create some amazing sounding audio that's going to that you're going to be able to reproduce so that when you send out your demo and someone hires you based on your demo whether you're on a freelance site like an upwork or, or fiverr or anything like that then you've got to make sure that you can produce that same level of quality and i'm hoping everybody's understanding me because this is one of those things that is taboo in our industry of voiceover the whole thing behind making your own demo no you should never make your own demo bull crap you've got to do it and i'm saying that and i'm going to say it emphatically to whomever whatever wherever the voiceover artist is or industry i'm going to tell them emphatically that's a, a bunch of crap that's why i think it's so funny um how i said earlier it's almost like it's a it's a scam it's a con that no you've got to make your own voiceover demo well i've made enough videos on that and you guys i'm sure understand where I come from um, Joanna um, no problem enjoyed uh, enjoyed that I forget what I did you say thanks for the input this past weekend D did I do I do so much so I'm sorry jo <laughs> Joanna I don't remember but you're welcome um, <clears throat> now that all rolls into the whole thing and the whole premise of stop waiting for permission uh, I say stop waiting for permission to be great there's certain things that you're just going to have to dive in and do and know that you're going to stumble from time to time, but that's how you learn. And don't worry about it. You make a mistake, you pick up the pieces and you keep going. When I listen to, oh my gosh, when I listen to some of the um, voiceovers that I did seven, eight years ago, I kind of, I cringe. It's like someone hired me based on that, you know, but, <laughs> but it, but it happens. And it's a whole thing of an, the concept of, the VO world and the the market and the jobs that are out there actually for you to get. I don't think that people quite understand how large the market is and not only the market, but how much competition there is. I think there's way less competition in the market than people think. The reason being is because that so many Joe Blows out here think you just buy a microphone, plug it up in your computer, and all of a sudden you can hang out your shingle that you're a professional voiceover artist. Doesn't happen that way. And you can hear it in the presentations of the different demos or the different stuff that they want to share across the, um, you know, across the internet and on social media. Oh, that, jo okay, Joanna, completed audiobook, title change. Oh, I remember, I remember. Okay, <laughs> yeah, good job on that. But all, though there are thousands and thousands and thousands of VOs coming into this industry every year. Hell, maybe every month, I don't know. But those are not the people that you're in competition with. You're not. If you are studying every day and you're building your knowledge base you're getting the coaching that you need. And when I say coaching, I'm mostly talking about virtual coaching, which is you're, you're looking up topics and searching things on YouTube, you know, how to do voiceover, how to do audio processing in whatever DAW it is that you happen to be using. And that's one of the reasons why I committed to making these videos and also to doing these live streams is to produce that content based on what it is that you say you want to know. That's why, and again, I'm going to go back to what I said at the beginning of this live stream. Don't ever be shy about asking me a question. Um, I'm extremely happy at the growth in this channel. I started this channel uh, last year, uh, maybe about a year ago, but I really didn't do anything with it. 
And so when I decided to go ahead and jump into this this realm of of being a YouTuber, (laughs) quote unquote, I said, okay, I've got to understand and learn the strategies behind YouTube. So that was a learning curve that I had to get. I had to understand and learn the strategies and the learn and everything else that goes behind producing a video, the software to use, um, things like that. I had to learn because it was something that I wanted to do. The whole green screen thing that you're seeing me do now, this live stream, this is a learning curve, you know, of learning how to do certain things um, that you want to learn how to do and to make it professional, at least as professional as you can make it. But when I say virtual coaching, I'm talking about doing those things and going out and watching videos on the topics that you want to learn about. Over and over and over again, you will hear me say that YouTube and Google are your friend. Whatever it is that you want to know and learn, it's on YouTube. It's in Google. It's there and it's for free. That's why I get so, I don't know about getting upset. I mean, I don't begrudge anybody for, uh, you know, creating a course to help people out or whatever, whatever. What I do get upset about are are the promises that I hear some people making or the inferred promises that some people are making. When you hear people say, oh, join this course or join this webinar for $400 or $499 or $299 or whatever it is uh, to hear about this person that blew up in voiceover and it only took them three months to do it. Well, (laughs) I don't know if any of that's true. I don't know if what they're telling me is real or whatever, but what I do have is my own experience. And there is nothing that I have done outside of uh, some things that I have been able to do and accomplish within a very short period of time. You're talking about, just think about that, you're talking about building a voiceover business. And if you want to build a six figure voiceover business, that's a whole nother thing. And it's not about just jumping on Twitter or jumping on Instagram or jumping on Facebook and running a Facebook ad or whatever. And all of a sudden blowing up, it just does not happen like that. This takes hard work each and every day. I'll give you exam. I'll give you an example of my day. Um, I don't do a daily vlog. Some people have, you know, Some people do daily vlogs and kudos to them. I just don't think my day is very exciting to vlog about. That's why instead I I instead want to just uh, concentrate on making videos and doing live streams. But my day starts out seven, uh, about seven 30. Um, well, I'm usually up about four or five. And during that time, I'm doing some research on what I need to do to either prepare for a video or something like that. That's the first part of my day. Um, Leave the house to get the kids to school. Usually have them at school by about eight. I'm back home about 8.15 in my studio. As you know, I started the live stream at nine. I get back, yeah, I get back home about 8.30 or so and fix me my cup of coffee (laughs) and whatever, my second or third cup of coffee actually. And then I sit down and I plan out the video or the live stream that I'm going to do for that day. After I'm done that, especially if I'm doing a recorded video, then I've got to edit that video. That takes me another hour. Um, so we're up to about 10 o'clock in my day. Um, and then at about 10 o'clock, 1030, when I'm done and I've posted it up to YouTube and I've done all that kind of stuff, it's right into email. Uh, checking the email that I've had come in from the previous day from you guys, from clients, responding to that, so on and so forth at about 11 o'clock to about one, because about one o'clock, I go ahead and and take a break from 11 to one. I produce whatever it is that I need to produce for my clients. Um, I usually have anywhere from two to six voiceover gigs to do every day. Um, So that keeps me busy. And that's based on a lot of the marketing that I've done. All right. So that gets me up to about one o'clock. If I'm done all of my VO work, About one o'clock, what I do is I start my marketing efforts and my marketing efforts um, are mostly based in email. Second to that is connecting with people on social media, the people that I want to do business with, the, my potential clients, whether they're on Twitter, whether it's usually for me between Twitter and Instagram, 
where I connect with different clients, usually just by going and commenting on the stuff that they're doing, um, sending them an, an instant message if I've never sent them an instant message or anything like that before. But my marketing composes maybe about another two hours of my day. And so we'll say that's from about two to four o'clock, um, excuse me, from about two to three o'clock. It takes me about an hour, hour and a half to do. Then I've got to go pick up my kids from school and I go do that. Um, by the time I get back, it's about, what time is it? It's uh, running on about four o'clock when I get back home. From that point on, um, making sure the kids do their homework. My wife will get home usually around 5.30 from her job. That for me gives me freed up time. I'm back down you know, in my studio right here, continuing on with some marketing efforts, checking email again, and going through all of that, checking some statistics on some things as far as my how my email marketing is going, um, looking at responses back from social media, things of that nature. Um, then starting the pre-work for doing some of the next day's work, which is videos like this one or doing a live stream, so on and so forth. That'll take me from about six to about nine or 10 o'clock, depending on what's really happening online. And you guys, if you've sent me a message before an instant message or you leave a comment you guys see i'm answering comments 10 11 o'clock at night one o'clock in the morning because the engagement part of this whole thing is important not only my engagement with my clients but my engagement with you um and i think that's a big part of it but since i started doing all of this with making the videos every day and i kind of got sidetracked from what i was saying about that um started the channel about a year ago and then went on and said okay let me get focused so basically last month at the beginning of april i said i'm just going to make a video a day five days a week i'm going to make content for people that are looking for it and you guys have responded the channel has grown to over 300 subscribers in less than 30 days it's over 300 now and it's continuing to grow and Thanks to you guys for doing what you're doing. You're commenting, you're sharing. Those of you that do share on social media and things of that nature, all of that helps. Every comment that you make, every thumbs up that you give, um, subscribing and ticking the notification bell and all that kind of stuff, all of that stuff helps. And I definitely appreciate it. And I know you don't have to do it. So when you do it, it makes me continue to want to do more and more and more and give back more and more. Um, Anthony says, sometimes I get overwhelmed because I'm not sure what to look for. Would you talk about having an infrastructure before you start marketing or need for it? I'm going to tell you this, Anthony, and everyone else that's listening. <clears throat> Just start. The infrastructure will come. Yeah, I can give you tips on infrastructure, but when I first started day one years ago, I didn't have an infrastructure. I'm just shooting out emails. I'm just doing what I said I'm, I was doing. I was going on social media and doing those sorts of things. I mean, I've been in this game for over um, uh, basically a decade now, so I'm pretty well entrenched and you learn as you go. So many times I think, you know, and I'm not saying this is necessarily you, Anthony, but people will ask questions. And they'll wait for an answer and they won't do anything until they get the answer. And even sometimes after they get the answer, they still don't do it. So my whole thing behind that, as far as an infrastructure and how do I get started? And the thing is to start, you have an understanding pretty much of that pretty well. Just start, you know how to send an email, you know how to go on Google and research, um, clients, which is really easy. Uh, the same thing on social media. Look up a certain genre you want to market to. Look up all the, you know, authors. If you want to do audiobooks, start looking up authors and book publishers. You know, that this isn't rocket science. It, it is hard work. Um, Hubert says, um, watching you at 1023 p.m. here and set up appointment to talk to you on Skype. Midnight my time on Sunday. My schedule is open on Sunday. I didn't think my schedule was open on Sunday. <laughs> I'm going to double check that, Hubert. Um, it may be. I don't know. It, it, it may be. I had set up my schedule to have blocks of time set open to do that 15-minute um, free consulting session um, for that. But that's another thing. 
uh, setting up those blocks of time to when people do want that one-on-one interaction or that um, one-on-one consulting that I do, uh, especially for the um, the 15-minute free session that I have, um, I've got to set time for that. And my 15-minute sessions, you know, I've done 15-minute sessions that last 30 minutes. And it's like, okay, I got to really hunker down here and make sure that I'm sticking to this because time is important. I've, we all only have a certain amount of time um, every day. So we've got to make sure that we're cognizant of that and we're allotting the time to what needs to be done appropriately. So with that being said, that's why I kind of went through a little rundown of what my day looks like. And, you know, in there, you know, for me to eat, you know, the two or three times that I do, then, you know, that's cool. Um, Anthony uh, says, I think it would be noon on Monday. Okay. That sounds, that sounds a little bit more like it uh, with that. I'll, I've, it'll come in. I don't know. Let me check. If you made the appointment, it may have come in through my email already. Have no idea. Uh, doesn't look like it's come through yet, but sometimes it takes a bit for that to do. But looking forward to talking with you, Anthony. And it's important if you want the one-on-one consulting. I only do consulting on Skype, face-to-face. You've got to have a webcam. You've got to have Skype and set it up. I want to see you. I want to, I read people. I need to see you. You're inevitably going to ask me a question that's going to force me to go online. I'm going to have to show you a screen or you're going to have to share your screen with me because a lot of times when you can see it or when I can see it, it makes much better sense. So I'm very, very strict on Skype. I've had people that just wanted to do phone conversations. I don't do those for consulting. I I just don't. Um, I've done them before and they're just not as effective as when you can see me just like you're looking at me now and I can see you. And I mean, everybody has a BS meter and I have a good one and you probably have a good one. You need to see me to know that I'm sincere. You need to see me to know that I'm not feeding you a line. You need to see me so that you know I'm actually engaged and I'm not over here doing something else and just talking to you on the phone and I'm not really into what it is that you're saying. That's why I do Skype. That's why I do my interviews uh, the way that I do. Um, So I hope that explains some of those things um, with that. My whole key thing that I wanted to talk about with this live video session today with this live stream on YouTube was you've, you've got to start people. You've just got to do. Yeah. Um, Hubert, I got to comb my hair too. Uh, <laughs> man, and what's funny is like, I'm looking at my mustache and my, my beard, my goatee or whatever right now. And I'm seeing I'm scruffy right now doing these live streams and these videos. It forces me to make sure that my head is shaved, that I'm shaved um, because everything comes across on video. Um, especially, well, not, maybe not so much on the live stream, but when I do my everyday videos with my camera, uh, it gets some really good shots and I say, oh man, I didn't say, well, you can probably see this. I've got some scruff under here too, but, um, (laughs) it forces me to put on a nice shirt, something, uh, it, you know, it forces that. So I'm glad I don't have hair anymore because I don't have to worry about if things are in place. It's just a razor and that's it. I'm done, (laughs) you know, with that whole thing, but I hope you guys understand why I do what I do with the consulting that I do. Um, whether it's the free 15 minute session or you're setting up a one hour session or whatever, I want it. I want you to see me and I need to see you. And the communication is a hundred times better than just on the phone. So that's why I do the Skype thing. Plus it's free. And no matter where you are in the world, we can have a conversation on Skype. It's free. Everybody has a webcam. Everybody has obviously internet connection. So Skype, it's it for me. Um, stop waiting for permission is probably my biggest message for today. You know, stop waiting for permission to be great and stop being scared. Stop being scared or waiting on someone else to say that you're ready. You know that you're ready and you know when you're not ready. You know when your audio doesn't sound good. You know this. You know when your mix, if you're putting background music in it, you know if it does, you know if it sounds well or if it doesn't. You, you know this. And here's the biggest indicator of things. And for everyone, and I'll tell everyone this, that wants to start sending me 
like your demos or things of that nature to look at. I, I've started telling people, don't send me your completed demo. I don't want to hear that until later. What I want to hear is just your audio, just your dry voice. That's what I want to hear. We can cover up some things with music in the background, but when your audio is spot on, that sounds absolutely great. I want to hear what you did before you put the background music in. I want to see the WAV file. I want to see where all the little noises are in there. I want to see that because then that's where I can help you. It's not about does your demo sound great? Does your dry voice sound great? That's where the rubber's going to meet the road because everything else is just polish. You know what I mean? But if that dry voice audio isn't on spot, nothing is. All right. Um, Anthony says, I know this might be a dumb question, but should I use PayPal to accept payments or have them mail it? I use PayPal a lot uh, for that, uh, for payments to come in. People, I'll send them a PayPal invoice. They will pay that invoice. No problem. Then I've got the clients that just mail me a check or whatever, but everyone gets an invoice, whether it's through PayPal or whatever. I use QuickBooks, um, and if you're not using some sort of accounting software, I mean, QuickBooks, you can get, it's online now. Uh, it's just an online service, and you can uh, get it for, I think, right now they're running a special for $10, um, $10 a month uh, to use QuickBooks. And when I when I started my LLC, um, Earl Hall Studio LLC, when I formed the corporation, um, QuickBooks just makes everything really, really down and dirty easy, uh, especially today. If you've ever used QuickBooks back in the day, I've used it since I don't know when. It's changed a lot. It's a lot more user friendly. You can set up your bank accounts and everything right there online. You can link that up because um, what I do with PayPal, when I get a payment from PayPal, and this is the good thing, is say you charge, say you got a payment for $200. Well, of course, PayPal takes their, what, 2% or whatever it is off of that so when i put that into quickbooks into my accounting software i say okay this is how much it was and then i can also show an expense for however many dollars that was uh from paypal and it's it's it, so i it's like i don't even care about the fees that i pay whether it's from paypal whether it's from the freelance sites that are out there all that money that they take you can claim that on your taxes that's an expense you know, so most places take $20, uh, $20, 20% of the fee. So if, like if you did something on Fiverr for $5, they're taking one. That's 20% of five bucks. So you're making four. Well, you can claim all that and get that money back. And then what makes it worse when you transfer the money from some of these accounts, from some of these freelance sites, you know, you transfer that money because you've linked it up with your PayPal account. Now PayPal is taking another freaking cut. And it's, it's like all of this, you know, you keep track of. And if you stay on top of it, um, you'll come out pretty good. And I do my taxes um, every quarter. Uh, once a quarter, I do my taxes just to keep everything simple. And as long as you stay on top of everything, it's good. I don't know why this has turned into a tax question. Oh, because Anthony wanted to ask me about PayPal. <laughs> but anyway, just trying to be as helpful as I can with that. Um, we've been on for 35 minutes now. Uh, what I want to make sure that you do, I want to make sure that you give this live stream a thumbs up. Um, those of you that have been on for most of it, if this has been useful information, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't learned jack crap, don't give me anything. You can give me a thumbs down if you want. Um, but also, oh, no problem, Anthony. <laughs> no problem at all, man. I'm glad to answer those. And this is what I'm here for. And again, like I've said so many times, I've got a lot of information, but I don't know what you don't know. So if you never ask me the question, I've probably got the answer just sitting here, but I don't know that you want to know it. And I can guess, but it really helps me produce content uh, based solely around the questions that you guys ask, because I know that's way more beneficial than me just talking about something that I think you might want to know. Sometimes I do that because I'm really hype about an issue or a topic. So I'll, I'll talk about that in a video. But the best content comes from you folks. It doesn't come from me. The, the best content comes from the questions that you guys 
are asking. Um, I'm going to get much better at um, doing the videos. Uh, I'm getting a lot more comfortable. I can tell from the first time that I started doing the videos six weeks ago that my flow has gotten better. I'm a lot more relaxed. I'm getting a lot more comfortable in what it is that I'm doing. I'm a ham anyway, and I don't mind being on camera. So um, I guess that's a good thing, especially since I want to make YouTube videos. Uh, but do you guys have any other questions? We've been on for 40 minutes, and so I think we're about to wrap this up. But if you guys have any final questions, I'd love to take them. Make sure that you do, if you, if you have not subscribed to the channel, make sure that you do subscribe to the channel and make sure that you tick the bell notification uh, so that you get notified instantly when I go live like this or when I upload a video, you, you will get instant notification. Also, make sure that you join the communities that I have, um, in particularly on Facebook. Uh, you can go to facebook.com slash groups slash, is that it? Let me go to the group. Uh, but it's steps to voiceover success.com steps to voiceover success.com. Um, if you go to the website steps to voiceover success.com, there'll be links to all of my social media. So you want to follow there. Sometimes I put information in other social media channels that aren't in others. And so you kind of want to make sure that you're engaged on maybe a couple different levels with that. If you are a member of the website, steps to voiceover success.com, it's an absolutely free website. I'm about to tell you why I made that website free um, for a minute here. Um, okay, some things have come in. Uh, Joanna says, I love the fact that you address the newbie in the business. Um, you answer the questions that I often have and haven't asked yet. My question is what to do to use to track your work. Huh. Now, basically, whatever system it is that I'm on, um, if, if it's a freelance site, then that's pretty much all I use with that. If it's a client that I got through email marketing or they're coming in through my website, um, basically, you're going to laugh. Did you hear all that? This. This is it. Um... I write stuff down. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty much it, you know, and I have a calendar and I'll say, okay, this is due this date. But every day, that's one of the things I'm looking at is, okay, what's due and what's coming up. And so that's it. And for whatever reason for me, I tried to do that using software or whatever, and I just wouldn't keep track of it. Um, and I found that me, for me, writing things down just made a lot more sense. It kept me way better on track than it was trying to open up a software package and put this in and put that in. It's just easier for me just to write it down. I, I just have a notebook that's just for clients and I just write stuff down. Um, so no big secret on that one. Um, hey, Sam Academy, how you doing? You said you're here now. Uh, Sam, I have a question, Earl. Um, Joanna, more specifically the process. Well, Joanna, maybe I'm not the best person to answer that question for you. <laughs> I am not the most organized person in the world. I will tell you that straight out. If it wasn't for some people on my, you know, some people that help me out on my team, even my wife, um, where I kind of delegate some things to do, I don't know how I would do as much as I do. But a lot of stuff I keep in my head. So, and the writing down of things helps me out tremendously with that. Um... Let's see. Sam says, uh, what to do if I am not a native English speaker? Then you, Sam, uh, I, I'm glad you asked that question, Sam, I, I, because I had gotten a, an email, I think it was last week from someone and they wanted me to listen to their demo and it wasn't a native speaker. And they were asking me questions on how to get better. You don't need to get better. You need to you always work from your core strength, whatever language it is that you speak or whatever accent it is that you have. Trust me, there are people out there that want that. So if you're not a native English speaker, I don't, I mean, I speak nothing but English, you know, <laughs> so I can't do the things that you can do. 
And what you need to focus in on is your strengths, not your weaknesses. It's not even important that you're not a native English speaker. I mean, it's just not. There are whatever country you're in, whatever language it is that you speak, there's work there in voiceover. Don't concentrate on what you can't do. Concentrate on what you have and do that. That's how you're going to uh, be successful with this. Um, let's see. Anthony says, do you tailor your emails or direct messages to the individual or do you use a template? Um, if so, do you have any advice on what to use? I cannot freaking stand templates. Templates are your enemy because they make you lazy. What you do is you customize every freaking thing you have to that individual. Quick process here on doing an e for doing email or instant messages or whatever. On instant messages, I might do a copy and paste. It's not that big of a deal. But with an email, never ever do I use a template. I don't send the same email out to everyone. It just does not happen because I'll do the research on the company that I'm trying to do business with. And by doing the research, I know what they're into. I know what they're, what they're thinking because I'm stalking them on social media. I'm seeing all of that. And I do that so I can get context of what to put into the email. I'm looking at the things that they're posting to see what kind of work they do, the flow that they have, kind of see their style so that I can speak to that individual like a real person. You know, when you get a templated email, you know that. So I never, ever do that. I customize every email. If there's a process that I have for that, you want to make sure that it's completely all about that person or that company. It's like 90% them, 90 to 95% them, 5% you is what's in that email. If I said a little flow, um, if I were sending uh, you an email, Anthony, um, and I'm just, I got to make some stuff up because I haven't stalked you on social media. Hi, Anthony. I see you make um, a lot of different types of explainer videos. I'm noticing that you probably use this type of service, blah, 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 uh, to create those videos. And it seems really interesting how you're able to put all of that together. I noticed also that you have several different types of voiceover in some of your videos and a lot of them sound really really good you know so what i wanted to do that's the first time i've said i what i wanted to do was just kind of touch base with you reach out to see if i could offer you some value in the voiceover arena i've been in business for several years um, and would love to just connect with you to see if we can work together one of the other things that i do is sometimes i'll add this to the email why don't we do this? Why don't we set up a call? Let me do a small little project for you pro bono for free. I know we've never worked together before, so this will be a good way for you to really see if I'm someone that you want to work with. That free spec work gets me more work than anything else. And they develop into clients if you can produce. So that's my whole take, Anthony, on the whole thing with um, templates. Can't stand them. Um, <clears throat> let's see where we are here. Uh, Sam, da, 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 Taylor emails, um, Joanna, I asked that same question on Facebook ACX narrations and that was their same answer. Old school. Haha. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Anthony says, would you be willing to do a video on walking through the entire email process? Even what you write? Um, probably not. And I'll, I'll tell you why I, I have email marketing videos on the website. Uh, for steps to voiceover success.com. I did a whole training on that and it's what you can take a look at. The reason I say no is because I hate telling people what to put in an email except for a basic overview because then inevitably what everyone does is write emails based on what I said. And the thing about the email, there's two things. The first part is that you've got to make it all about them, but it's gotta, it's gotta be in your voice. Meaning it's got to sound like something you would say. It's got to sound authentic. And it's going to take you a minute to find your voice in that if you're not comfortable or haven't been writing much emails. But the basic outline for all of this is the introduction is basically high. You're talking about them. One, no more than two sentences about what it is that you do. Third is trying to set up a call. That's it. You want them on the phone. You don't want to keep trading back. You want to call because you want them to hear and see and understand you. And when you're on the call, how do I say be cool about it? Um, 
I, I don't know. It's 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 funny. Um, maybe one day eventually, and I actually had thought about this. I thought about recording myself on a cold call, and seeing how that worked. But of course, I'd have to have permission from that person, which you don't always get. Or it'd be kind of funny to ask in the middle of a sales call. But I don't know. Maybe some kind of way I can figure out something. Uh, so that you can kind of see what I mean with all of that, but don't expect it like tomorrow. Don't expect it soon. It's just something that's in the back of my mind. Um, on that one. Um, let's see. Uh, Sam says, okay, that was me. Um, thanks so much, Earl. You're awesome, buddy. Thank you, Sam. I appreciate, you know, I appreciate the time that you guys take out just to sit here and look at my stupid little live streams and videos. Um, Anthony. Okay. Thanks so much. This is awesome. Thank you, Anthony again um sorry you answered after i wrote that oh no problem um but anyway <clears throat> thanks for the questions that have come in this has been hopefully helpful for you um it's been extremely interesting for me i love doing this uh so it's 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 just what i love doing um helping and contributing where i can contribute because i thought that again the brand new voiceover artist was underserved getting back to this and this is my final thought so i'm going to say this and if you have a question you want to get it in now because after i finish telling this story we're going to be done all right my website steps to voiceover success.com and again if you have not become a member of that site you want to do it like now it's absolutely free i started the website at the end of 2016 um, somewhere around august time frame and there used to be a, a monthly membership subscription. Um, it used to be, I think I sold it for, I don't know, I forget, $99 or something like that uh, for a year's subscription. And one day I had a, a conversation. Was it a conversation? Because I got hung up on uh, another voiceover artist, not voiceover artist, but someone that represented another voiceover artist. I was a member of this. Uh, Facebook group um, and I won't say the name of the group and the Facebook group was based on a course that I had taken last year about this time to learn some things about uh, Fiverr and so when you join that group you got access to this private Facebook group and I already knew about Fiverr and I kind of understood some things but I wanted to take the course because it was still something a little bit brand new to me so I took the course. The course was extremely valuable. Um, it helped me a lot um, in regards to Fiverr and the utilization of Fiverr. And But anyway, I had access to this uh, Facebook group. So I never participated in the Facebook group except to go in and ask, not ask, go in and answer questions. <clears throat> People would ask questions. And I think a total of four times I posted in this Facebook group four times um, never once uh, asked anybody to come visit my site never asked anyone to join my Facebook groups or visit a website anything like that one because it's not um, you don't do that <laughs> you don't go into someone else's Facebook group to try and get other people out of the group that's not what you ever to ever do don't do that um, it's just the same like here on YouTube. You don't go on another person's YouTube channel and put links to your YouTube videos. It's, it's just not the thing to do. It's not acceptable practice. And I've done this. Um, I mean, I've been doing this for so long. So the etiquette of it very well entrenched. Um, but what does happen is sometimes people will see you an answer that you give. So they'll click on your icon and they may wind up seeing you and following you that way. So this particular person sends me an instant message. It was pretty late at night and says, hey, we need to talk. And I was like, oh, cool. What does this person want? So I called and basically got bitched out for trying to steal members from their Facebook group. So I was kind of floored because I was like, if you see that I'm there and you monitor this group every day, which I knew this person did, you know, I've never done anything of the sort. And then they went on to question me about, you know, well, you didn't, you didn't tell us you were in the coaching industry. And I'm like, I've got to tell you, I've, I, I've got to tell you what I do, you know, type of thing. <clears throat> and I said, look, I've never, you know, done anything, but you already know that you have been in the group. You monitor the group, you know, I'm not in there doing anything of the sort. And so at this time I was still 
And he wound up um, hanging on, hanging up on me, just saying this conversation is over. And I'm talking to him just like I'm sitting here talking to you, but I get hung up on because, okay, whatever. And this happened at the time where I was charging $99 for um, a one-year subscription to the website. When I had that phone conversation, it opened up something in my mind. First of all, it let me know that somebody that I thought was, um, if I don't like using the term above, but they, they're bigger than I am in this uh, coaching world, in this coaching industry. But what it let me know is that they found me a threat, even though I was doing nothing threatening, but they saw the stuff that I was doing outside of Facebook and things like that. And I assumed they figured that I was going to be a threat to them. But what I did was I sent him an instant message and I just said, I'm leaving the group and I left the group because I didn't participate that much anyway. So I just left the group and went on. So what happened with that is it opened up something in my mind to say, you've got all these coaches that are out here that are claiming to want to help, that are claiming to want to do something for the voiceover industry. Um, you watch their YouTube videos, you watch their Facebook videos, you see their post and in every freaking thing they do, they're trying to sell you something. Everything they do, in every last freaking thing they do, they're mentioning a course, they're mentioning this, they're mentioning that, and they're trying to sell you something. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I, I, I see the pattern and I see the model. I'm not following that model. Because brand new voiceover artists, they can't afford all that crap. Especially with the, the um, pie in the sky promises that so many of these different courses offer. To me, it became disgusting. I'll put it that way. So that's why I opened up steps to voiceover success.com. The next day was free. Free. I offered the people that had paid money to give them their money back. Um, no one took me up on it. Uh, I did get an email from one person that said, well, no, I didn't want my, my money back because I got so much value out of the website. You know, so it's like, Steps to voiceoversuccess.com is going to continue to grow through this YouTube channel, through the content that I provide, through the questions that you ask. And that's the story behind why it's free. And that's why I want you to go there and I want you to join because it's absolutely free to do that. The only thing it is on that, on steps to voiceoversuccess.com that I charge for is my time. If you want a one hour session with me or something like that, where I'm coaching you or consulting you, then yeah there are fees for that but the stuff that i do the content that i produce the courses that i make they're free they're free and i thought it was something that was needed and so that's that um all right um sam says uh my last question earl if i try my best to learn pronunciation like native speakers by using pronunciation dictionary will that improve my skills more thank you please must answer this one Everything you get better with and pr with practice. If you can tell me quickly, um, Sam, what language do you speak? To, if you can just put that, just say I speak whatever, whatever that language is. But obviously you speak English because you're listening to me as well. But your native tongue, um, what is that? Uh, let me know that. But yes, anything that you do with practice, you'll get better at. Um, there are accents that are out there. I'm from Virginia, which is in the south of the United States. It's a southern state and was born there. We moved to uh, Maryland, which is about uh, 200 miles north of Virginia. And, and we moved there when I was about 11. Being from the south, there's a southern accent. And I had a thick one. <laughs> I had a thick southern accent. And when you move to a, when you move from a rural area to a urb, to an urban area, um, people notice how you speak. They notice that we call it speaking country. Okay. You speak Urdu or Urdu. I don't even know what that is. See, I, I don't even know what that is, but at any rate, <laughs> <clears throat> oh, Anthony says you're from Virginia. I lived, I lived in uh, Mechanicsville, Virginia, Hanover County is where I'm actually from. Um, so yeah, I grew up in Mechanicsville. Uh, that's where I was born. My parents are from Ashland. And if you know that area, you know, it's rural, it's country. Both of my, both of my grandparents were farmers. Uh, so I grew up pretty much on a farm 
and had a thick country accent. So when I moved to Maryland, everybody picked up on that accent. And what happened over time is I learned how to not have that accent. Um, and I'm not too sure why. I've always been what people would call a proper speaker. Um, Williamsburg, my parents uh, go to Williamsburg all the time <laughs> just to get away. <clears throat> but I've always been what people would call a proper type of speaker, um, enunciating and all that type of stuff uh, pretty well. And I guess that comes in handy being I'm, I do, I've done a lot of public speaking. I haven't done a lot lately, uh, but obviously I speak every day, um, whether it's through voiceover or doing these videos. Uh, but I don't know that you'll ever lose your accent. But what you do is take advantage of that accent. Like I know Europeans, even people from Australia, uh, people in the U.S., for whatever reason, when they hear an English accent, like from England or from Australia, they automatically think that person is intelligent and smart. And so those voiceover artists get over because people sometimes want that, that feel. And us in the United States think that people that sound like that with a British accent or something, it always comes across as intelligent. And so <laughs> that's a good thing. And that's how they use their accent to their, to their benefit. Um, being from Pakistan, uh, there are things that, okay, that's where the, the, the Urdu, I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Urdu or you do, or you uh, see, Never mind. Uh, this is where I would call the client and say, you need to send me an audio file of the pronunciation of this word. And that's what I do a lot. Um, I do a lot of work um, e-learning uh, jobs out of China. I get a lot of work out of um, China from one of my clients, at least three to four jobs a week. And, th you know, it's like, no, send me the pronunciation of this word uh, because I'm going to screw it up. So they already know if it's, you know, they can kind of tell the words I might struggle with. And so they'll send me over an audio file of that pronunciation uh, so that there's no mix ups on that. But being from from Pakistan and being from the Middle East, I mean, I've heard some awesome voiceover artists from the Middle East. And so it's it's amazing to me that you would want to lose that accent. Um, you can utilize that to your benefit but you're going to have to do some, you're going to have to do some work to figure out how to best utilize that. But you are never, if you've been born and raised in the Middle East, there's a, there's a flow to every language. There's a cadence to every language um, that's out there. The only accent that I can do pretty well is a Jamaican accent. And that's not being, I've never been to Jamaica, not from Jamaica, but there's a cadence and it's almost a song. And you know, if you're from Jamaica, you want to make sure that you do this right. You know, there's, there's a cadence to different ethnicities as far as, as how we speak and we speak differently and from country to country and even from city to city, uh, you can have some, you can have some differences. So I don't know. Don't count that as a, as a strike against you because you have that accent use it to the best of your ability just use it and come on there's people all over pakistan and the middle east that are using voiceover artists key in on who they are and start connecting with them um you are saying the word in the right way okay thanks sam <laughs> i appreciate that okay well guys um it has been one hour and three minutes I've got some voiceover work to do, but I definitely appreciate you taking your time out today uh, to listen to this crazy ball head guy um, try and help where I can. Uh, make sure that you do give this video a thumbs up, like it and share it all over. It'll probably be up online in about uh, probably about an hour from now because YouTube has to process the video and then they'll put it out. I have no idea what I'm going to call this thing. Um, because we talked about a couple different topics and this may just be how my live streams go. There's no specific topic in it. We just talk about what we flow with. So at any rate, you guys have a great Thursday. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> have a good one. Bye.